being in the house of the Lord. Amen. I don't know about you, but I've been blessed this morning. I'm just glad to be here. I'm uh, just uh, blessed by the songs. No sweeter name than the name of Jesus. The Lord has put a lot of special people in my life. I'm thankful. Family, friends. I got friends I've had for years. We're not, we're not figuring on not being friends, amen. We're gonna keep on as long as we can. Thankful for my wife. But no sweeter name than the name of Jesus. Amen. No sweeter name. It's always right. It's always right. Whenever we call on his name, he, he gives us comfort when we need comfort. He sends healing when we need healing. He lifts the dark cloud when we need the dark cloud lifted. He is a friend. That sticks closer than a brother. No sweeter name than the name of Jesus this morning. I'm just so thankful this morning. I'm so humbled this morning by his presence here. I'm so humbled by the many blessings. When we just take time and just pause and look around and see the hand of God working in our life through every circumstance of life, both the highs and the lows and those in-between times, I'm so thankful. No sweeter name than the name of Jesus. Thank you, Nothing I have could earn that. It's out of his great love that he came. It's out of his character. It's out of who he is that he came and, and, and bestowed on us the riches of heaven. No sweeter name than the name of Jesus this morning. Can we just pause this morning and give him praise this morning? We thank you, O God. 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 Great is your name. Great is your name, God. We give you glory and honor, God. It's due to your name, O God. We praise you, God. No greater name than the name of Jesus. No sweeter name than the name of Jesus, God. We praise you this morning. We praise you this morning. Thank you, Jesus. 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 If I could just speak the name of Jesus over those that are bound by addiction this morning. If I could just speak the name of Jesus over those that are, are, are under that cloud of depression, that, that bondage that Satan has put them in, thinking there is no hope for tomorrow. If I could just speak the name of Jesus because no, no sweeter name in the name of Jesus. Those that are perplexed about tomorrow yes. and the challenges it may bring that I cannot even enjoy the day, cannot enjoy the sunrise or the sunset or the many blessings that God sent because they're perplexed over the, the, the circumstances of the life. If yes. we could just speak the name of Jesus yes. over today. That's our prayer, Lord. Yes. That's our prayer Thank this morning. You, God, we praise you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. No sweeter name. No sweeter name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name, Jesus. God, we praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. God, we just praise you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Praise your name, Jesus. Oh, I just thank you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Would you just lead us in one more course of praise? Jesus, you're the center of my joy. Thank you. 
Isaiah prophesied some 700 years before Jesus came. And when you read this, especially when you read just the, the few verses, there's a few verses at the end of uh, chapter 52, and when you read through this and beyond, he gives a description of the, of, the, of the mission of the ministry of Jesus Christ. He gives a description of the, not a king, a conquering king, but a suffering savior. And this was... This was hard for the Jews to comprehend. It's as if there were two people, whether it is two, it's one person, but he came as a suffering Savior the first time. We're going to see him again as a conquering king, the one that they were looking for. But as you read on, it says Isaiah is watching the passion of Christ. He's seeing what happens before and the, cru the, the trial and the, cruci the scourging and the crucifixion of Jesus Christ as if he's watching it. So if I had any doubts about God's word, read this and, let, and then read the Gospels where Jesus was crucified. Those events that happened, he's telling it as it happened. Yeah. It's, it's 700 years before there was even, there were even crucified people. He's describing it. And so he's talking about this Jesus, the sweetest name that we know. And it begins in verse 3. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we, as it were, we hid our faces, as it were, from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. That's the ministry of Christ. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded or pierced for our transgressions. They pierced him on that cross. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. That's why we can pray each and every week, each and every day for the sick to be healed. That, that was paid for right there. And all we like sheep have gone astray. We turned everyone to his own way, and, and the Lord has opened up, has laid it on him the iniquity of us all. Just that night, the, 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 when Jesus was in that crucial hour, I know we're coming into Christmas, and we're talking about Easter, but this is why he was born. Uh, they spread out like sheep astray that did not stand by him. We turn everyone his own way, and the Lord has laid the, on him the iniquity of, a, of us all. He was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He stood before Pilate, and every other person was pleading their case so why they should not be crucified, yet Jesus opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to slaughter, as a sheep before his shearers is silent, so he opened not, opened not his mouth. Thank you for standing for God's word. Thank you. And we've been talking about the trade. Uh, we started out with trading our word <coughs> for his peace, and we certainly <coughs> live in an anxious world. But we know that Jesus told us not to worry, but rather to seek him first. And we talk about trading our hurts 
for his comfort. We talked about uh, even now, even this morning, there are those that are worshiping, knowing that they could uh, be um, uh, receive a death penalty for uh, proclaiming, singing that sweetest name of Jesus, yes. proclaiming that Jesus Christ is indeed the, the King of kings and Lord and Lord, the Son of God. But they're willing to, to take that risk because he is yes. the sweetest name we know. Amen? Amen? And so today we need to continue to pray for that persecuted church, those Christians that are uh, yet even in, in the face of persecution, they're telling others, this is the sweetest name you'll ever know. Yes. You'll ever know. He is our comfort. And we know that God in turn promises his comfort for those that are in great difficulty. But this morning we're talking about trading our grief for his joy. And we know that grief is part of the human condition. We understand that. But we, in spite of that, we can have joy. Yes. Jesus Christ came so that in spite of this fallen world that we deal with, that we can have joy. Amen? That's, right. That's yeah. why he came. Jesus was uh, despised. He was rejected and acquainted with grief. Yet he had joy. Yet yes. he had the joy of knowing the Father intimately. Yet he had the joy of knowing that he was here. He had a mission to accomplish. And that it ultimately would bring salvation to the us. Amen. Yes. To everyone on man, uh, on, that has been born. He, to bring sal that way of salvation to us. And so he found the joy in following God's plan. for The Father's plan for his life. And so uh, the angel said, uh, whenever he announced, they announced the good news to the shepherds, they said he would bring joy to all people. Amen. And remember, they were under the heavy uh, hand of the Romans. They were not able to experience the freedom that they desired. But yet he said there would be joy to all people. Whenever Jesus started his uh, ministry, we have record where he read the word of God. Again, prophesied his ministry. It's found in Luke chapter 4 and verse 18. It says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Yeah. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to recovery and the recovery of sight to the blind, and set at liberty those who are oppressed. Yeah. And so he came to break those <laughs> bonds so that we could have joy. Right. So if we're bound, uh, we're broken hearted this morning. We know he came to heal yes. that broken heart. Yes. Amen. Yes. And if we're bound by some uh, chain of anger or depression, he came to break that body yes. to yes. set yes. free. Amen. Yes. He's greater than that. His yes. name, he, his name and his power is greater than that depression and that anger that we are bound by. He came to set free. If you're oppressed this morning, yes. we know he came to bring liberty That's so right. that we could experience the joy of heaven, amen, right, and this amen. earth that we live in. That's the reason that we have the hope of joy this morning. In Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2, it says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. In other words, the beginning and the end. He's going to take it the whole way, amen. Yes. Who for the joy was set before him endured the cross. What is so joyful about enduring a cross? He knew what the work that would be accomplished on that cross Yes, he was pierced. Yes, he was bruised. They beat him with their fists. They plucked the beard out of his out of his out of his face. Uh, they uh, pierced him with a with a with the nails. They pierced him with a with a spear. But yet he took that. He endured that, and he knew that his father would turn his face from him because he carried the sin of the world. Yeah. But there was a joy in knowing that us this morning can be set free, yeah. amen, that we can live a life, abundant life yes. this morning in him, amen, yes. the great price that Christ endured to purchase our sins, amen, purchase our sins, amen, that we were guilty of, he says, I'll carry them for you, amen, right. so that we can have the joy of having communion with the Father, yes. amen, that's great joy this morning, yes. that's a reason to celebrate, on the cross, Jesus cried out, again, Psalms chapter 22 uh, the whole chapter deals with uh, the, 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 the anguish that Jesus Christ went through. In verse 1, it says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
Why are you so far from helping me and from my words and my groaning? In other words, uh, he experienced, again, that separation for God, from God, that separation that we would experience if it were not that our sins are forgiven by Jesus Christ. Right. Amen? And I don't want to be separated from God. Amen? Amen. I want to be in his presence. We've experienced his presence this morning, and I'm thankful that this is good, and I, this is great, and this is wonderful. I'm thankful for it, but I'm, I'm looking for that day in a glorified body that yes. we'll see God, at, we'll see him as he is, amen. amen. We'll stand in his presence, that place that is fullness of joy and love and peace, amen. amen. I'm looking for that day. You, so why did all this happen? Why did Jesus do what he did for our, to purchase our uh, our salvation, John 3, 16, you all probably can say it by heart. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. That's the good news this morning. He loved us so much. In other words, he didn't come because we asked. He came because of our great, his great love for us. Yes. Amen. He instigated salvation this yes, morning. He did. And what is stronger than love? What is stronger than love? Love will endure pain. You, you, you hear this morning, you, you love your children, you have those loved ones, your parents and so forth, and you know you go the extra mile for them. Why? Because you love them, amen? And so it is the Father of Heaven. He loves us. You'll make any sacrifice. You here this morning have made sacrifice for your children, amen, and maybe some other loved ones in your life. But you're willing to make that sacrifice. Why? Because of love. Love is not a passive thing. It is. A, there's action in love, amen. That, that we will go the extra mile, amen. We will uh, do whatever's necessary to see what needs to take place. To takes place everything within our power. You'll risk life itself to protect and to shelter. You would put yourself between danger and your child. Maybe some of you have already put yourself between danger and that child. You're willing to do that. We have those that have served our nation. You put yourself at, at risk for the protection of us, this nation. <laughs> and we appreciate that. Why? Because you love this nation. Amen? Amen. And we appreciate that. Love is a heavenly um, emotion that we have been allowed to experience. Amen? Amen. We know that heaven is a place of, of love beyond measure. We cannot, we cannot measure it in any fashion. We don't have any way of measuring it. Amen? But we know that we've been allowed to experience it. It is the prevailing emotion of heaven. Yes. It's not hype, it's love. Amen? Yes. Amen. Out of his great love, Christ carried what we were not able to carry. That's the weight of our own sins and grief. We were not designed to carry that. And you know what? He came to, to carry that load for us. He was able, he came and picked it up and said, I'll, he said to the Father, I'll carry that sin. And you know, there's nothing on this earth that can rescue us from the weight of our grief. Yeah. Only his love. We yeah. can try a lot of substitutes, but it will not work. Right. His love will carry us. Amen. His grace will carry us. Yeah. That sacrifice that he made, when we receive it, that will carry us out this morning. Isn't that good news? Yes, That's good news yes. this morning. Yes. Amen. He did not come because we earned it. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. We, like the... the like the disciples said, yeah, we, we, won't, we won't back up. We're going to stand with you. But when that persecution came, they scattered. And we all at some point in time have followed our own will rather than God's will. Yeah. What's best for me? What's be what will satisfy me? We've chased that before. We have all gone astray. But we know that because of his great love for us, he came. Yeah. He came to carry that weight. Uh, when we are weary from the weight of our guilt, and our grief, our regret, we must remember the great price that Jesus paid that we can be free this morning, yes. that we can experience yes. his joy this morning. Amen? Yes. We've all made mistakes, but I'm thankful that he came to pay for our mistakes yes. this morning. Yes. That is good news. Yes. Amen? Yes. Jesus was afflicted so that we could have the joy of the communion with God. Yes. Amen? Amen? That's where satisfaction comes. That's where we get relief from our grief is whenever we commune with our Father, whenever we experience His presence, whenever we experience uh, His goodness in our life, whenever we experience what He has for us, uh, we can experience joy in yes. spite of our circumstances. Amen? Amen. We have the, re the reason that we have joy is the price that He paid yes. for our mistakes. Jesus has walked through grief Himself. Yes. He knows what it's about. In other words, when he was born, he wasn't born in a palace. 
He wasn't born to a royal family. He was not born where other people took care of the problems. He wasn't born to a, a place where someone else took the grain, uh, blame. He was born to a working class couple into a despised town. In other words, what did they say about Nazareth? No, nothing good comes out of Nazareth. But yet that was Jesus Christ's hometown. And yet he was rejected by his very own people. They questioned the validity of his birth. They questioned everything about him. They, they claimed that he was a devil, but yet he carried on. Amen. Yes. He carried that grief, being rejected by his own people. It was the, after it took uh, him being crucified and resurrected before his own brothers realized this indeed is the Christ. Amen. So he dealt with that. He carried our grief. So when we cry out in the midst of our grief, he, grief, he knows where we're at today. Yes, he, he has carried that. He can relate to us. Amen. Yes. And so, you know, in, in life, in life, especially as a younger person. You know, when you're going through something, you needed to talk to somebody. The best person to talk to is somebody that has been there, right? That's the best person to talk about. If I have a car issue, um, uh, as, as well-rounded as Miss Mary is, I'm probably not going to talk to her about a car issue. I'm going to talk to Scott. He's been there. That's what he does. He knows about cars. And him and a brother Tommy, that's what they do. Uh, that's that's what they know about. And so the same way, whenever we cry out with our grief, Jesus Christ knows where we're at because yes. he was willing to carry that in this life that he lived on this earth. Right. Grief's power to ruin us is past. Yes. Ru grief will hold you back. Grief will have you living in the past. Yes. Grief is like a dark cloud that yes. you can't shake. But whenever we say, you know what, God, I can't carry it any longer. But, Lord, I know that your son came yes. for me to have joy, to have life, and have it more abundantly. Yes. That power is broken. Yes. Amen. Yes. And so instead, that grief that we experience trains us in the same way that the sufferings that Jesus Christ experienced on his life on earth to accomplish God's will. In other words, it, it refines us to be that person that God desires for yes. us to be. That's a big turnaround, amen? Yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. God comforts us today through Jesus Christ. He comforts us today by the price that Jesus Christ paid, by the, the <coughs> sacrifice that he was willing to make. But he's going to comfort us later by, re, by removing every reason for our grief through all eternity. Listen to what Revelation chapter 21 says. And verse 1 reads, uh, verse 1 and then later verse 4, it says, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth have passed away. Also there was no more sea, verse 4. And God shall wipe away every tear from their eyes. Yeah. There will be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain for the former things have passed away. Hallelujah. We have that hope this morning. We're not yes. there, but that's where we're going yes, to. Amen. amen. I'm going to a city. This country boy is going to a city where there's no more pain. Yes. There's no more separation. Right. There's no more that's disease. Right. Amen. Right. There's no more cancer. There's no more prayer list that's a mile long, week in and week out. Those have been taken care of. There is no more disappointments. There is no more regrets. Hallelujah to the Lord. I'm thankful we have hope this morning. Amen. And He not only intends us to carry us there, but he's going to keep us until we get there. Yes, Amen. Amen. Sure I'm looking for that day. Yes. You say, Brother Chris, how can we be sure of that? How can we be sure of the, the fact that there will come a time when there'll be no more suffering? How can we be sure that there's a heaven as the Bible describes? We can be sure of it because God's word is sure. Just as Isaiah, he prophesied of one that would come. He would be a root out of a dry ground. In other words, he was not readily receptive by his people. Uh, he would, again, he was despised. As, I, as we mentioned earlier, when you read that account in Isaiah and you read the Gospels and what happened to him, it's like he saw, he saw it happening and he described it. And that came true just as he said. Amen. And so we know God's word is true. Uh, Isaiah cru uh, described that crucifixion as if he was watching it. He described the order of the events as they happened. How he was taken from judgment to pray. Uh, to uh, prison and how he stood before them and he did not say a word. He did not plead his case. And so he described it. It also described when you read on down that Jesus was given a tomb. He was buried in a rich man's tomb. Do you know what's unusual about that? The crucifixion was all about humiliation. It was all about the strong hand of Romans squishing out those that were not obeying their law. And so it was, they, uh, chances are he was naked when they crucified him. It was all humiliation. 
That's why they mocked him so, uh, so much. And we know uh, when they took the body down, they did not bury a criminal. They carried him to the edge of town and they dumped him in a dump, what we would call the dump. And so Jesus was not put in that dump like those other two criminals with him. He was buried in a tomb, and Isaiah prophesied that. That's what's significant about that. He, uh, they would, uh, Rome's desire was to treat that body like a like a, a criminal, put him out to the edge of town, and let the birds and the uh, wild dogs and the other uh, animals we call them varmints where we come from to take care of the body. But that's not what happened to the body of our Lord Jesus right. Christ. He would, Nicodemus pleaded for that body. That's the significance of that. And Isaiah prophesied it, and it happened just yes, as he yes, said. He was yes. buried with the rich. Uh, Joseph of, of Armenia said, I've got this tomb. I have yet to use it. Obviously, I'm here. I've yet to use it. And he said, put him there. I want the body. I want it there. And so we find that's the significant. It happened just as Isaiah prophesied yes. some 700 years before it took place. <laughs> God's word is sure this morning. Amen? Yes. yes. There are other things, many, many things. We could spend a, a lot of time, but just a few to bring to our attention. Israel is a nation. It was born in a day, just like God predicted. Yep. Just like he said, it happened. Uh, Europe has combined its powers, just as the Bible tells about the old Roman uh, Empire being revived again. We see that taking, has already taken place. Money as we know it being abolished, the mark that Revelation talks about, whether it be in the wrist or the hand or up in the forehead, that day is coming. We see, uh, we see already China is a cashless society. I heard uh, someone tell me that they're trying to, even in parts of this nation, we, money as we know it's going to be abolished. The Bible predicted that. There have been people changing uh, hands with coin. My son, he likes to to uh, collect coins, and they've been you, there's been some form of money or currency since the beginning of man, but that's going to change, and the Bible predicted that. Iniquity on earth is abounding. Will anybody testify to that? Yeah. Just as God's word spoke about it. Amen? Yes. Just to name a few. So when God says he'll wipe away all tears from their eyes, I know this is going to happen yes, just yes, as he spoke. Yes. Amen. I know this is true this morning. Thank I know you. how is it that God is going to take the grief from us that we've experienced. I don't know how he's going to do it. I just know he's going to yes, do it because yes. his word yes, said. Yes. I have some questions concerning that, but I do know those tears will be dried up. Yes, Amen. That's the, that's the hope that we have this morning. Amen. You, through, Jesus. Our, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Yes. We're going to train our grief. For joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. Yes, amen. That's the good news this morning. Amen. In Psalms chapter 30 and verse 5 it says, For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy amen. comes in the morning. Yes, yes, there are seasons of grief. Yes, we've lost loved ones ourselves. <laughs> we understand seasons of grief. We understand uh, seasons of disappointment. We understand uh, seasons of letdown. We understand seasons where we felt betrayed, but great. But the good news is joy came in the morning. Yes. He carried that grief. I don't have to live there. I don't have to be bound by that. I don't have to play that over my head over and over and over and over again. I can live in this moment. I can rejoice and be glad because he carried that grief for me yes, this yes, morning. Yes, Amen. Yes. That's the God we serve. That's the Jesus Christ that came to us that day that we're going to be celebrating next week. Joy is going to come in the morning. Amen? Yes. Yes. Amen. So Brother Greg, as he plays, if you're here this morning, as we well know, it is a, it is a wonderful, Christmas is a wonderful time. But we do know for many, it wakes up, it, that grief, that cloud of grief sometimes gets heavier during the season. We know that. That's a fact. And you may be here this morning. You may be experiencing that. You may be experiencing that, that uh, the regret, the, the, the weight of regret, of past mistakes. This morning, Jesus Christ came to break those chains. Amen. That's why he came. That's the ministry of Jesus Christ. Yes. Your heart may be broken this morning. Your heart may be heavy. He's here to heal. He's here to heal. He can, he can start that process today. Sometimes it, it happens fast, and other times it just takes this process. There's, time, there's times when we, we, it just takes us time to get past that, but He is our healer this yes, morning. He is. he is our healer. Yes. We, we can trade our grief for His joy. Yes. 
We can, we can enjoy the moment because of his joy. We can enjoy the blessings that we see all around us by his hand. Whenever we, whenever we accept it through him, we realize this is where it comes from. It's great place. <coughs> it's available to us this morning. Receive it. Yes. Receive it. Yes, he is. And the one time. 